Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you some autumn book recommendations. As I said in a video not too long ago where I talked about my easy read recommendations, I'm starting a kind of recommendation series just because I never give specific book recommendation videos and so I thought I'd do a whole heap of them from now on and yeah. I had to of course do an autumnal one because tis the season. <laughs> I'll leave a link to my previous two recommendation videos down in the description box. I have one on fantasy retellings and one on easy reads. But since you're here for this video now, I'm going to crack on into it because I'm really quite happy with the books that I've chosen for this. I do think that they do encompass the autumnal theme very very well and so I'm very excited to share them. Although just before we do start I am just going to put a general, not quite trigger warning, although maybe, but just a warning out there that because I associate dark books with autumn, most of these books, if not all of them, do have quite violent bloody themes to them. Some of them have things like self-harm towards a purpose, such as needing blood for something, and just general things like that, so do be wary of that if you are interested in any of these. <laughs> So the first one I am just going to get out of the way because I have been talking about this incessantly recently but I do think it actually fits the theme because this one is The Bronze Season by Samantha Shannon. <laughs> this one is about a world where clairvoyants exist but being clairvoyant is illegal. Our main character Paige Mahoney is a clairvoyant and because of this she kind of works in this underground gang who commit crimes in which their clairvoyant abilities do help them. But one day she's actually captured by the government and is taken away to this place and a lot of things happen from there. In case you somehow missed it, this is one of my favourite series and I just think that this would be such a good autumnal read if you don't want something to be spooky. With the whole clairvoyant side of things, it's literally talking about spirits all the damn time. You have people with crystal balls and tarot cards and all that kind of thing. And then with the mix of dystopian and sci-fi, the world is just pretty dismal. <laughs> the underground gangs are really quite vicious and I do think that that level of violence, along with the added spirits and the just dismalness of the world, really does make quite a good autumnal atmosphere. I first read this book absolutely years ago and I can't remember which season I read it in but I just know that I always associated it with autumn and I think it is because of everything I've just listed, especially the whole spiritual side of things. And I mean the very name of it, The Bone Season, is literally just a synonym for autumn and Halloween, is it not? <laughs> so if I have convinced you that this is the book you want to read this autumn then if you have somehow missed it then I'm currently hosting a read-along for the series. The read-along is called Bonathon, yes you heard that right. <laughs> And we'll be reading The Bone Season in October and then the sequels The My Murder and The Song Rising in November and December. However, you don't have to stick to that time frame. If you need to catch up with The Bone Season in November, then you can do that. Or you can just shimmy around the books within that time frame however you like. Just when you read it, use the hashtag Bonathon on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube so that I can see your updates and yeah, read along with us. <laughs> I'll put the announcement video for that down in the description box if you want to find out more information, but would definitely recommend for many reasons, one of them being it's a very autumnal book. <laughs> Next up we have Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan. This is a short story collection, it's quite a short one and it's basically a retelling of many different fairy tales. What I love about this one is that it very much focuses on the women of the fairy tales and it kind of makes everything a little bit witchy. This is very much a witchy type of book and again for that reason that's why I'm recommending it for autumn. This is also just a super quick read and it's also accompanied by some illustrations which we always love. It's dark, it's twisted, it's fairy tale esque as you would imagine and yeah I absolutely loved it. I honestly don't think there's anything more I need to say. <laughs> One that I talked about a lot over summer but I actually think it would be perfect to read in autumn is The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson. This was actually our first mythic read which just that in itself makes me adore this book because I have such fond memories of everything it started. I say memories, it's still happening. Either way, love this book. This one follows a girl called Wren who every single year is chased through the forest in this kind of warp tradition by a bunch of guys who are called judges. However, if these judges found out that she is actually an ogre, then this hunt would become a lot more deadly. Throughout the course of the book, Wren is actually sent into the base of the judges in order to kind of retrieve this object which could help save her family. This one just, oh my god, it's so, so good. I knew that I'd enjoy it, but I, it just went beyond that. I absolutely adored it. 
This one is inspired by Irish folklore and so much like Tangleweed and Brine, this does have the dark and twisted atmosphere that fairy tales and folklore would bring, but also just the deadly rivalry that happens between most of the characters raises the stakes throughout the entirety of this book. But it's also just quite a fun read as well because the main character has such a contemporary voice on her, she actually does sound like her age. It's got quite a sarcastic humour to it as well, which I really, really enjoyed. So while it might not be entirely your thing, if you are looking for an urban fantasy, I would highly recommend this one because it's just so good. I'd also recommend the audiobook because with it being set in Ireland, there is a lot of pronunciations that just don't happen. <laughs> But also the narrator just manages to capture Ren's voice so well with the sarcasm and whatnot and so I would highly recommend listening to it if you do want to give this one a try. The next one is a book that I used to talk about all the time but I haven't mentioned in quite a while and that is The Dead House by Dawn Kurtigich. This one is a horror book which is written in a multimedia format. So it's presented as a case file for a mystery of a school burning down, I think 20 years ago? 25 years ago. Three students were killed during this event and yet it was never quite figured out how this happened. And so the case was closed until now because the diary of Carly Johnson was discovered and so the case is reopened and you get to read it. This is definitely the sort of horror book that can mess with your brain because with it written largely from diary entries, you are relying on something that might not be reliable. And with it specifically being set out as a case file as well, you do sometimes read things that contradict each other. And so come the end of the book, you kind of have to decide which side you want to believe. And I still debate to this day what I want to believe happened in this book. <laughs> it is a pretty hefty one, but with it being a multimedia format, it is pretty quick to get through. I have already read this twice, but I'm actually really tempted to reread it again. I really, really enjoyed this book. It's not the sort of thing I'd usually read, but it's a good one. <laughs> So I would highly recommend it if you want something that's dark, spooky, but not just outright horror. Especially if you do like reading things like spiralling psychology and things like that. So yeah. Next up I have a classic horror and this is actually really quite short but I adored it. I read this one last year for university actually and just ended up adoring it but that is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Now I don't know if any of you watched The Haunting of Hill House last year on Netflix but the second season is actually inspired by this book which I'm so so excited about. So this one follows a governess who is looking after two children but after a short amount of time there she actually realises that these two children are being haunted and so she feels the need to protect them from these spirits. Now I'm not going to say anything more than that besides there is more than that and you'll realise that come the end. But this was definitely a book that just absolutely left me shook. Like I was shook to the core when I read the final page of this. So much so that I actually wrote my final essay on this. It's actually covered in annotations and I could talk about this for so long. I have like a whole page of notes written just about this book like it's so good <laughs> it's definitely one of those that I didn't even realize how much I was enjoying it until I did read the last page and then I was like that was good but if you do want a ghost story around the Halloween time would definitely recommend this one it's so so good it's only really short so it wouldn't take you too long to get through but just read it guys read it <laughs> it just got really dark so sorry about the lighting and this being like really overexposed. But we are on to the final book now and that one is The Furies by Katie Lowe. This one I read quite recently on the recommendation of Becca from Becca in the Books and it follows a girl who was actually in an accident and as part of this accident she got a big payout from compensation and with this compensation she starts attending an all-girls private school. When she gets there she pretty much immediately zones in on this group of girls who are quite aloof and mysterious and she very much wants to become their friends and kind of infiltrate the group but when she manages to do so she realizes there's so much more to these girls than meets the eye and things become a lot darker than you would realize this is very much a dark academia type of book you know from the very beginning that at least one girl ends up dead but you don't know who and so this is very much set out as a thriller and I fell for it completely. I read this one really quickly, I could not put it down. You probably know already that I do love the dark academia type aesthetic of a book. That genre in particular just wins me over most times and I just... This is such a good example of it. I couldn't put this book down, I love how twisted it was and quite believable as well. Like they did actually sound like teenage girls in the UK. <laughs> And I feel like that in itself made it much more unnerving because I could somewhat relate to it. I have in fact been a teenage girl in the UK so yeah. But again I very much enjoyed this one and if there's any season that you're going to read it in it needs to be autumn. 
it, it just needs to be. <laughs> so these are all the books that I'm recommending you to read in autumn. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts on them were if you have and also if you have any recommendations for autumn reads even though my autumn reads will consist of university books. <laughs> I do love books that have dark atmospheres so if you do have any recommendations for those then let me know because I will be straight on that. <laughs> but that is it for this video so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing that. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!